Kay Schultz interviewing Molly Roberts. No S. No S. No. <laughs> Molly Robert. This is Josiah Robert on March 18th, 1980. Would you like and would you like a glass of iced tea? Yes, maybe. John? Yes, please. Yes, sir. And with us is her son, John, and we're going to identify some old snapshots here in a book from way back when John was a little boy visiting down here. I'm looking at a picture of Molly with her two little boys who look about three and, three and seven. Three and seven right here. And now they're all grown up and probably grandfathers. So you see this is going to go back a long time. Very close to seven. Right. What was it like in the when you first came here, Molly? Well, there were no like Australian pines. No pines. No pines. And uh, just the sea grape and palmetto. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was. Uh, it was. It was very, very different from what it is now. It must have been a much flatter look. Oh, it was. And it probably was. a lot safer against hurricanes, wouldn't yes. it be? So that the water could roll right over all of that sand? <laughs> and there were no houses on this end of the island. There were some up on the further end, mm -hmm. the, where the, the Corvus, I think the name was, that they, they had a, a, a garden and a, a plantation, sort of, you know. This would be up near near the South Seas? Yes. Mm -hmm. But, and the Bryants, the, the, what was this man's name? Tobe. Tobe. Tobe, Tobe Bryant. Bryant. And his family. And they lived up on the north end of the island and had a, a, a orange and, and grapefruit plantation and also vegetables of all kinds mm. and we used to go up there you had everything you had to go by boat there wasn't any roads and there were no cars oh. and there was only one car a wagon and that was a, a like a, a strip wagon and a, a mule and what was his name mr norris mr norris norris and Norris. Mm -hmm. no, 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 and no. there's a picture of uh, Mrs. Norris and Andrew in here somewhere. I think it may be over the next page. Right I hadn't realized that there was no transportation except boats at that time. Yes, at that time. Now, get now get what about what year are we talking? Well, this is not 19, 8, 7, 16, 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. That was my father and my mother. Oh, your mother and father were here before you? Yes. What were their names? They Bishop. 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 And did they live in this same house that you're living in? They built well, it, yeah. They, they built, built, they this, built this. this house. But it was just a, just a very small house at that time. Just 12 by 16. Like oh, a, I see. With an with mm -hmm. an overhang. Mm -hmm. And the, the, there was a little bedroom in this overhang and that was a porch and in the back there was a kitchen and pantry mm -hmm. the overhang mm -hmm. and upstairs it had a, a dormer window so that made a bedroom upstairs now did they uh, live here all the time or just winter visitors oh, just this just in the winter time mm -hmm. where did they come from long island mm -hmm. from Mercer's long island mm -hmm. And that's where you and your husband yes. have always lived. Yes. So you you used to come here with your little children and yes. while you visited Grandpa and Grandma. Yes. That's fun. Uh -huh. And John came down alone with his grandmother. Yes. Oh. And when he was seven. Yes, and again when I was ten. Oh, and spent this the winter with them. Yes, this is when I was ten. Now, did you go to school at that time? Uh. No, there was no uh, way of going to school. Uh, my grandmother had uh, a friend who tutored mm -hmm. 
Well, the Dickies had a, a tutor, a, a, a teacher I see. for their children. Was that Mrs. Seward? No. He tried to teach me, but I don't think I was a very good student. Oh, <laughs> but you did used to go to school up at the Dickies house. No, no, I don't remember doing that. But, well, maybe you were just lucky and took the winter off. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I remember we did that with our daughter when she was in about third grade. She had whooping cough, and she came down with my mother and father. And uh, mother would, uh, they were staying at Captiva Lodge at the time, and they would sit out on the veranda every morning and do their multiplication tables and a little bit of reading. As little as possible, I think. Now tell me some of these other people who were living here at that time. Well, they were great for having uh, costume parties and get-togethers. And I think that's mark. Mrs. Jagger, and that's Mrs. Halsey, her mother. Mm -hmm. That's Mrs. Mr. Ferrum um. in the background. Mm -hmm. I don't know that one. I think that was Mrs. Thumb. Mrs. Thumb, that, that's right. I, Is Mrs. Dickey there? Mm. No, Mrs. Hicks was uh, Miss Trulis. Is that her? Miss Trulis's mother. Mm -hmm. She, they, they had the big red house up there. Right. How many people were spending their winters here at that time? You said there were not as many. Well, that, that took in pretty near the whole group. There That's was the a few more than that. But All living along here on this stretch, pretty much. Well, they lived, yes, mostly. And Mr. Dickey, Dr. Dickey from Bristol, Virginia, bought this section of the island and he divided it up into lots, a mm -hmm. uh, hundred foot lots. And this was lot number nine, ours was, mm -hmm. and this number 10 was just the other side and where Green Waters is now. Mm -hmm. But then you think this house was built about 19? 14, 15. 14 or 15. 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. See, he was on, my grandfather was only here the one winter, and that was 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. he, See? Uh, and then my mother had this piece put on, built on, mm -hmm. but that, that, that is the front door, and this was a, this was so a little bedroom. The porch room, and that was added, yeah. too, to the original. Mm -hmm. yeah. That por this porch was all put on later. Yeah. Yeah. I can see what you mean. There just isn't the vegetation there, is it? No. See, there's no pines there. No. Next door, where the Whites live, was an old house mm -hmm. before he had his, like, mm -hmm. yes. problem. Yes, I remember that. And that was built by Molly's aunt and uncle. Oh. O.B. Smith. Aunt Laura and Uncle Al Smith. Mm -hmm. And they built first, and they sent word to her father, there's a one lot left, and you'd better hurry up and buy it. And it cost $100, didn't it? Oh, no. What did it cost? The house I don't think it cost as much as that. No. Huh? You're thinking of the taxes, maybe. I'm trying to find that tax sheet. It was, sheet it was not very much. No, not very much. But I would think that to build the house was rather expensive because you had to haul everything over by barge, didn't you? Yes. Five hundred dollars. That, that I came said. from <laughs> Nocatee. There was a place up uh, up the river where they they brought all the lumber. Charlotte Harbor or, or the Caloosahatchee? They 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 brought it by by barge, I think. And, and to Oak of Grand, was it? Hmm. Now, did Tobe Bryant build this house? No. No? Uh, I forgot what the man's name was. I thought they all got together and uh, built a house. Here, I'm looking now at a tax receipt for 1915, and the aggregate taxes were $2.85. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> 
Well, I suppose you didn't get much for your mo your money in those no, days. No, so no really. electricity. <laughs> no, and, and no, no roads. And no roads. And no school. And no school. No, no policemen, I suppose. Lamps. Need any. Out houses. Oh. Uh, they were all fully clothed at all times. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you'd be chewed to Except the little kids. Oh, looking for uh, gold. But I, because I could see these women are all wearing long sleeves and long ankle-length and dresses. Then. Well, there was no mosquito control except for the smudge pots you built a little fire so that the wind would blow the smoke past the doorway when you came in. It was supposed to leave the mosquitoes outside, but... Uh, Didn't always. <laughs> were the mosquitoes pretty fierce in those days? They sure were. And they have been more or less recently, too. Uh, yeah, but I think probably this being winter time it wasn't half as bad as it w would have been in the summer no during the rainy season this is why people only came in the winter even their bathing suits and that's the reason they wore all these long clothes they, and, uh, even on the beach to yeah. keep the noceums off well i'll tell you they were wearing long sleeves and long bathing suits yes. up north where maybe there weren't mosquitoes or noceums either so it was sort of the style and sort of well, for comfort. that was the, that's the style of that time. Mm-hmm. Now, is this a boathouse that you had out there, or your dock? Do you see what see that is? Yeah, Uncle Al. There's one for you. That one I don't recognize. Uh, Uncle Oliver had a boathouse down at, at the edge of the shore, which uh, mm -hmm. they would haul a boat out and clean it, and I think he built a boat there. Hmm. And I think this is Mr. I'm not sure, that's Mr. Farum and his boat. Now, um, Mr. Farum is the one who owned the house that Sarah Sims Yes. Yeah. Right now lives in. Well, here are a couple of fishermen with some nice looking snook, snook, right, with a long black line on them. So the snook fishing must have been pretty good. And this is you as a little boy? No, that's Mrs. Norris and Andrew, I think his name was. Yes, her oh. son. Oh, she was, she was a, a real Georgia cracker. Oh, <laughs> she smoked the pipe, and, <laughs> and and she was oh they she was very much hurt if she wasn't uh, invited to all the things that that went on. She was mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of like Andrew Jackson's wife. Well, yeah. Uh, Mr. Norris was the only way that you could get uh, transportation. Everything came to the post office dock on the steamer, mm -hmm. and. Uh, your trunks and uh, he had the mule groceries. And, uh, yeah. He would bring the ice, and he also talking about mm. yeah. he also uh, had a vegetable garden and sold vegetables. And Fred Jagger said he thought that was Mr. and Mrs. Iber, who were at one time owners of the Buck plantation Key. on Buck Key. Right. Now here are they seem to be unloading things from yes, that's yes the that, that was the the, the uh, Gladys is that what that says mm -hmm. the, the yeah, Gladys the yeah, ferry one of the uh, ferries they came right to Captiva came all the way from Fort Myers mm -hmm. well it came to Sanibel Sanibel um, Wolfert Captiva um, mm -hmm. that's my mother and my aunt and Annie mm -hmm. and they. My mother used to bring somebody down. My father only lived one year after the house was built, mm -hmm. and he he died the next summer and never came back. And so she used to come and she'd bring someone with her. Mm -hmm. Then you people have, con your family has lived continuously in this house since way back in 19... Yes. Not exactly. Um, Dad, uh, Joe Robert, didn't want to come down for whatever reason I don't oh. know mm -hmm. till after he had a very bad illness he agreed to come down expecting to die here mm -hmm. he lived quite a good many years and learned to love it six months here six months on Long Island oh that was nice 
and uh, they used to treat us, us or the other son to a visit down here occasionally. That was nice. And uh, it was rented in between times. That was Dr. Banning. He was a doctor at the boys' school, the Snyder the School. Snyder School? Oh, I've heard a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm surprised you didn't go to the Snyder School. No. Well, um... Uh, no. I think that was more of uh, older for boys. older boys to, for uh, Just for the winter. school. I see. There was a... This, this uh, Mr. Snyder had a, a, a camp in the north I think it was in Michigan somewhere in the summer, and then he'd bring the boys down here in the in the winter. Mm -hmm. And there was it was supposed to be a kind of a school, but uh, I think they did a lot of uh, playing. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't was real Mr. serious. Curtis was uh, one of the uh, instructors there, wasn't he, Mother? Ken Mr. Curtis. Curtis. Mm -hmm. He wrote boys books. Oh. Now let me see. This has to be somewhere else other than Captiva. Uh, Fort Myers, maybe. Mm -hmm. But are these all local people in this picture? Yes. Mm -hmm. This was the colony hmm? that all lived right around here. Yes. Yeah. Well, here they are, all dressed up in costume, having a party. You said they That's had lots they of did. costume parties. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Do you remember hearing about Miss Trula? Yeah. And Mrs. K? Yeah. Is that her? Is that a picture of Miss Trula? No, that's Mrs. Hicks. Oh. She was uh, Miss Trula's mother. Oh. Her stepmother, I think she was. Mm -hmm. Oh, these costumes are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they must have had a real good time with that. Well, you see, so some of these were in the in the twenties. Mm -hmm. You see, there was no television and no entertainment of any kind. They had to make their own. And even the present day cocktail parties were <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably more frowned upon then. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it looked so like so they were having a pretty good time. Uh, uh, scuffing <laughs> on the wine, maybe. Now we have an, another book here. Bar. I don't think this, don't tell me this hasn't been going all this time. Oh, I yeah. think so, the light has been light, going. Light flickers when you talk. Does it? But this isn't moving. Well, maybe that doesn't matter. All right, this is turned. Okay. Now here's a picture, it's called the Bishop House. That's yours. Yes. And that was my my mother. Now well, it looks this is a little from bigger the now. backyard, and that's the water tank. The cistern. You see, the all sister. the water had to be caught from, from the, the roof rainwater and stored in the mm -hmm. tank. Right. Still there. Yeah. And here, this little house is the Smith house, or is that yours? Yes, I again? think that's it. And here are the Smith and Bishop. I see what you mean about there being no vegetation. Yes. There's nothing but scrub, is there? No. But wouldn't the environmentalists love that? Because <laughs> there was nothing artificial nothing to get in the way. <laughs> uh, Molly's mother, Mrs. Bishop, and her sister, Mrs. Smith, had their garden, they called it, out here. Now that, uh, oh, oh, what's the name of that cactus? Uh, Can Prickly pear? Candelabra. Oh, yes. Candelabra cactus was part of their garden. This was before the pine trees. They had a little area marked out where they planted things. Mm -hmm. A lot of pleasure in that. That was Henry Jagger. Mm -hmm. That was Mr. Iba. He, uh, From Buck Key. Well, yes, he had a, a grove over on Buck Key. Now, he looks dressed like a farmer. Yeah. Did he? Well, you had to wear those things over there because of the... Uh, uh, Snakes and mosquitoes and everything. everything. Um, and yeah. Is that a costume party? Here's another costume party. You must have had lots of fun at that. But now, you weren't... Oh, here's another costume party. <laughs> that was her mother, not, not Molly. Right, yes. When you came here then, Probably uh, not until after you were married. No. Well, no. 
I guess not. That I, yeah. She'd been married uh, for quite a while when my grandparents first came. I see. They, they were a, a sort of a, a, a there were three, three or four of the people from here that went over to uh, Boca Grand, I think it was, and there they saw these Australian pines, and they looked so nice that they decided, that they were of the Village Improvement Society, huh? and they decided that it, that would be a good thing to have for, for Captiva and uh, Sanibel. And so they brought back some of the pines and planted them, and then they got, they got more and planted them all the way along the, the line. And uh, <laughs> is it, that's how the pine stock started here. <laughs> but Mrs. Ferrum never liked them. She never wanted them. And uh, she used to <laughs> put kerosene around them to kill them <laughs> so, because she didn't like them. <laughs> I did that but, one time when somebody planted some coca three coconuts right next to our driveway to keep the next door. And every time I went by, I breathed malediction on that. And do you know they died, did die? <laughs> so, you know, it's you like can't... Right, I know that plants understand those things. <laughs> now, well, here is your know. beach with nothing but sea oats. Yeah. And look how wide that beach was. And I think that up there was Dr. Dickey's fishing pier. And they in said the Gulf? that, uh, yes, went way out in the Gulf. And when uh, Theodore Roosevelt came to visit Captiva, he fished from that pier. And I think they caught uh, giant skates, devil fish, they call them. Oh. Hmm. Uh, well, I wouldn't think that a, a dock would last long reaching into the Gulf. No, no, it's not far from where the, the, the breakwater piers go out now. Oh. But this was, uh, I think, made of uh, palmetto uh, stalks, uh, trunks, mm -hmm. and went out, what, 100 feet, man? Mm. It looks in the picture to be the, all of that. Yeah. But now here are some, look like um, fig trees or mm -hmm. some, There's a few there. others back there. Mangoes. Mangoes. Mangroves. Oh. Mm-hmm. But I think at that time there were no coconuts here either, were there, Mother? No. I think they went to Buck Key and got coconut trees or plants from Mrs. Ormsby. There is an Ormsby in the cemetery. Um, there's, um, a, there's a monument to somebody named Ormsby they in the cemetery. Them. I guess. Uh, coconut palms are not native. They're not. Definitely. Wherever you see, they say if you if you see a little island and think it's always been uninhabited, if they're coconut <laughs> palms, no. Somebody, Somebody planted them. Uh, this is the beach when the, soon after the pine trees were planted back from the beach. Mm -hmm. Mother, well, how many rows of pine trees were on the west side of the road? Oh, I think there were three or four rows, hmm. uh, they, they went down, hmm. right there, you know. Hmm. Well, Fred Jagger said that the um, Florida State uh, uh, Agricultural uh, Bureau recommended the Putting pines in. for holding the soil, soil but uh, I think they were mistaken. Changed their minds about it. Well, I, they did give you very quick growth. They were in shade. Yes. There's no yes. doubt about it that they made it more livable. But now, of course, people have second thoughts about it. Well, that's the way so many so-called scientific theories mm. come into prominence and then fall and into die. bad repute again. But now you see, here are more coconut palms mm. that have been planted. They say they won't grow more than a mile away from the sea. Oh? No, thank you. No. Now here are some more. That's Doris and John, I guess, and that's me, and that's Doris uh, and our son. Our son. Oh, who's that? 
Grandma Bishop, your but mother, my mother, your mother oh. and you, and I, and our son John, four generations. Now, whose boat is this? Might be That's Dr. Fred. Banning, I oh. think. Mm -hmm. uh, mother, that's what I thought too, but Fred Jagger said that was a boat that um, Uncle Al had brought down from the north. Oh. And they uh, brought it by ship to Key West and offloaded it there and brought it up here. He said he had it built up here. He was a, this Uncle Al, Captain Smith, uh -huh. oh, Captain O.B. Smith, was a captain of yachts, some mm -hmm. prominent yachts, private yachts, private yachts of prominent people. Yeah. Isn't he the one who died over here and yes. they took his body back during, during a hurricane? hurricane? Okay. He died in a hurricane, but I think they, they, you know, he was they buried built a there. coffin right here. And they took some of the, they, there was an old kind of a shed and they took some of the boards from the shed and made this coffin. I think Mr. Hayford, Jane Hayford. Hayford's, uh, uh, I think she told me that story, how they yeah. built a coffin and, and, yeah. and buried him up here in the cemetery. Yeah. And she said they, they dug the hole and put him in, and then they realized there was no minister, so Max Hayford said the Lord's Prayer, and <laughs> that was it. I think this that was in 44, I think, okay. after the hurricane in 44. Mm -hmm. Now, here are some cottages at uh, Twin Waters. By the way, Those are more recent. for the benefit of posterity, these books are these are just filled with old snapshots and if anybody's ever writing a history and needs some illustrations mm -hmm. you'd better look into the Robert well, family I archives was, here. I was thinking of offering them to be copied but then I was told that it damaged these if they were made oh, a copier. These, oh. This, you can take these out. Right. This, uh, but you can take a photograph of them and have a and that makes a negative. A negative, and then they can and print that. And then can print that. Well, if but anybody... That's about two dollars each. Yes. But if someone were writing a book and interested yes. in getting old pictures, mm. that would be a very we small item. Right. That, uh, that's a, a picture of the bridge that went from Captiva to Sanibel, across Blind Pass. Oh, it's what much longer than the one today, it isn't it? Is. A wooden oh. bridge. The second mm. one, I think. And first one, they, uh, the, the boards kind of clattered, and that's what makes those. <laughs> now, somebody said that this first dock wasn't or bridge was not where the present one is, but no. was a couple hundred feet farther south. Yes. You think yes. so? Oh yes. This isn't is right there where it is, now. is it? Let's see, is that Castaways? Yeah. Oh. Wouldn't that be Ponderosa? No, this no. was uh, from oh, Sanibel to Captiva. Yes, uh, yes, that's right. The first one washed out in the 21 hurricane. Oh, and this was the second? I think so. And now the present one that they have is the third or more than that? As far as we know, it's the third, but we're not positive mm -hmm. that, not having been here. Right. Tell me about Tween Waters in those days. It was a well, lovely, pleasant place with delightful mm -hmm. owners. And it was a pleasure yeah. to anyone. And it was like going into your own home. Was that uh, when, home the, cooking when Mrs. The Price, Price opened yeah. it? Yeah. And Mother's mother, Mrs. Bishop, was influential in getting her to do that. Oh. Because uh, the Bishops had always run a boarding house summer boarding house, mm -hmm. and so she knew how to tell her how to manage, mm -hmm. and uh, so became very dear friends. Isn't it? I think she came down from Bristol. She did. Yes, Dickies she. had known her yes. there. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Price, Mr. Price was, uh, had had pneumonia, and the doctor said he must not live in the north and uh, in the winter time. so they came down here, and uh, at that time there wasn't any hotel or any place, motels or anything, mm -hmm. and they stayed with my mother, this uh, Mr. and Mrs. Price, and uh, uh, she, uh, that that winter they stayed there and my, my mother gave them meals and everything, mm -hmm. but then 
the next year they decided that they could run a little place of their own. And so they had, there was a, a cottage that a, the school teacher had built down here. And so they bought that, and that was the start of the Twin Waters. And it was just Mrs. Price's inn, or they didn't call it an inn at that time. But Mr. Darling, Ding Darling, was one of his, his their guests or people that they took in, and he suggested that they call it Twin Waters between the between the bay and the Gulf. Mm -hmm. see, so that that's how it became Twin Waters. Okay. Ding Darling, that really named it. He named it. Oh, well, that's interesting. It certainly was a tr lot more attractive in those days than yes. it is now. Oh, so and yet, really, it's just the last 10 years or less that it's gotten to be so commercialized. Yes. But I guess we can't fight <laughs> progress, they tell me. I try. Me. I try. I do, too. That's a ferry. This is the, That's the automobile ferry from Punta Rasa to Sanibel. I think the first time we came over, we came on that. Mm -hmm. Quite a few times. You had to. Well, the last boat came back at 5 o'clock, and if you didn't catch it over there, you right. had to stay overnight. Right. I remember our little boy, we were putting him to sleep out in the guest house that he was maybe five, and he didn't like being put out there while everybody else was still awake and he was alone and he said well I'm scared and I said of what he said crooks and I said oh well you know they don't allow crooks on Captiva that ferry boat captain would never let them get on the boat <laughs> oh he said and went to bed without a peep <laughs> so I have a little bit of remembrance of that ferry boat there that Captain Leon that Captain Leon. Um, Kinsey? Kinsey. No, that wasn't the name. Singleton. 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 Right. Well, the names of the captains, there were two. The two brothers of Singletons. Captain them. Um, Did they precede the Kinseys? Succeeded them. Yes. They well, succeeded them. Um, I think Kinsey owned the, 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 the boats, uh, the company, but he was, he was a, they were captains. I think he was retired by that time, wasn't he? Well, what about Leon? Leon Crumpler. He was, was that a, his name? He was a, a, a ferry captain for, oh, for years and years. And now that name sounds familiar to me, Leon Crumpler. Crumpler, yeah. Leon, everybody just called him Leon. He always, he always wore a hat, <laughs> the same hat it seemed to be. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh. sure. Well now, after you started coming down with Mr. Robert, coming regularly, what was it like then? Now I'm sure it was changed during your tenure here, oh, as yes. well as from the time when your mother came. Yes. It changed a lot. There were and Mrs. Price had a number of wealthy people who came and stayed with her, and they liked the place, and so they bought a lot and and built houses up on the Gulf, on what they called the Gold Coast. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so she really brought a lot of people here to the island hmm. because. She, she ran a nice establishment. A very, very nice place, and she she was very artistic, and she served everything so so nicely, you know. So well, this is Dottie Wakefield's mother. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Grace, Grace Price. Mm -hmm. And Grace's husband had a boat which he took out to took the customers out fishing mm -hmm. through Redfish Pass, wasn't it? I yes. wasn't here. I was here. That was when I was here. Mm -hmm. Thirty. Three, four. Mm -hmm. Is that when you started to come? No, they started to come in what, 1949? Mm -hmm. yeah. Grandmother Bishop came until 1934, and that was uh, the year before she died. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Then none of our family came except the mother would come to visit the Aunt Bill. Maybe okay. once. Mm -hmm. That was next door. But you continued ownership of it. Yes. And mm -hmm. rented it. And she rented it, and they took care of uh, grounds and things like that mm -hmm. with, uh, for mother's interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until 1948, I think it was, the uh, first time they came down. And came for over 20 years, six months here, six months on the island. Well, now, 1948 is when my parents, the Alts, bought the little house that I live in now. Oh, really? And they spent six months here and six months on Grand Island. Mm -hmm. So I guess lots of people did yes. it that way. Well, they do not. Do. Sure, sure. Uh, I guess most yeah. everyone did that. Right. Tell me about um, the early days of the chapel. Were you in on any of the yeah. chapel mm -hmm. development? Yes. Uh, the, uh, I think the, well, I guess it was a, still called the Village Improvement Society that decided that they should have some kind of a, a church to gather in. And uh, so this the present building was built for, as a schoolhouse. And uh, Mrs. Gore, who was a postmistress, here uh, and, and had been a teacher and uh, she uh, she was instrumental really in having the schoolhouse built and then the the the, the ladies uh, that wanted the church uh, bought the uh, in the, you see it kind of deteriorated uh, deteriorated there were uh, there wasn't enough pupils to keep it up and and uh, so they sold the building I think the Methodist Church Society owned it mm -hmm. and the uh, the people bought the built the building so it really belonged they belonged to the Methodists but they bought it from them and, uh, and they used to have a minister come well, that was before this, though, that while it was still a schoolhouse, I used to have to be a minister came maybe once in a month that would preach, and everybody went to church then, but that was the only time they had. But then they got so that they had a regular minister, uh, and I don't know, Mr. Gotten the name of the first minister. Was it Kennedy? There was a, there it was seemed a to Kennedy. me that my parents said that this Reverend Kennedy, who yes. was a Methodist minister, and he came over uh, every Saturday on the ferry and stayed overnight yeah. and went home right. after the services. Yes. That Mrs. Wiedekind always gave him his Sunday dinner as her contribution at Gulf View Inn. <laughs> and <laughs> and then he would go back on the last ferry going back to Fort Myers. Was there any relation to the current Kennedy? None, none. But it's strange that in this little yeah. chapel we have have two named Kennedy, which seems a little Irish, <laughs> too Irish to be a Protestant <laughs> minister. Well, Molly's husband also made a, after he was, did get to come down here every winter, made a contribution to the chapel of the bell. Oh. It was the bell in our school in Santa Maritza's on Long Island. Uh -huh. And a new school was a building. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, did he have to pay for it or it doesn't matter. They had to pay a dollar, I think. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and other considerations. But yeah. But, uh, and they had it shipped down here for the chapel. I didn't realize that. But my, 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 my husband didn't have anything he didn't want anything mentioned for, about made of it for him, but he wanted Captain um, Leak, Captain Byron Leak, to uh, get the credit. Yes, and so he had a had the bell. Miss Miss Trula had the belfry built. Yeah. On it, 
and then in memory of Dr. Dickey, or in honor of Dr. Dickey, it says there's a little plaque. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but it was your husband who arranged for the bell. He arranged for it, but he had Captain Leak uh, had the captain the printed. Did they send it on the ship? Yes, I guess they. They said Clyde Line? On the Clyde Line, that's one of the, he was the captain on the Clyde oh, Line. Oh, I see. And probably that's how it got. How it got down here. That's interesting. And, but Ed was one of those, he didn't want his name in the paper. Oh, uh-huh. It was nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's nice. I just think you only get paid once for your good <laughs> deeds. If you get paid down here, <laughs> you don't get anything upstairs. So <laughs> you try to keep quiet about these things. Hopes that you're building up points. Yes. Well, that is very interesting, Molly. I know that there's lots of people going to enjoy listening to this. We keep hoping that someday someone will transcribe all of these notes and do something with them. But at, at least we have them all on tape so that they're there as a storehouse of old Captiva yeah. history. John had, you had a correction to make of what it was, we saw it printed in the Island Reporter, the date of the opening of Redfish Pass. And you didn't... As I know, that was in the fall of 1921. Oh, that isn't the way they had it. I think they had a 20, the 26th hurricane. Yes, they did. Mm. And you think it was 21? Well, because uh, that was had the year two. that the last time I came until well, just a few years ago, mm -hmm. and the pass had gone through that fall before I came. And, uh, and that was 1921? New pass. They hadn't even named the Redfish Pass then. Mm -hmm. It was a very small one too, wasn't it? Because uh, for quite a few years you could wade across it. It was really just kind of a cut, I understand. Oh. Betsy Steyer said well, that during uh, the war. Maybe, as, as I said, maybe it had closed up and was reopened in 26. No, well, that may have been the first time, but I think it just didn't stay big. It had just simply gotten big, wider and deeper over the years. Yes. But as little ago as in the 40s, when during the war, when Betsy Steyer stayed with her mother, Bessie Beals, down here while her husband was overseas, she and... Jean Loomis used to wade across to Upper Captiva with their children for picnics at low that. tide. Yes, and see that, that was early war that, years. That this the end kept making out all the time. All the time, yeah. We have at home many very similar problems as uh, with erosion and inlets, as I have down here. Mm -hmm. They come and go. They come and go, and nature's going to do it no matter what you do. And no matter how much they spend re-nourishing this beach, it will go. It'll all go to Sanibel. <laughs> yes, of course. And so I wonder why Sanibel has the nerve to protest our putting it there, since they're going to get it all eventually. You can't understand why they don't want us to do it. I would just like South Seas to keep on re-nourishing their beach and we get a little more sand and they keep on doing it the next year and the next year. I think lots of people think that too, <laughs> that we'll ultimately all horn in on that. But I can see from these pictures what a, lo a very wide beach that was back in How deep those was the teens. Property? 500 feet, I think, and from how the bay to the gulf. It was 500 feet, and what is it now? Doesn't say on that thing, does it? Well, I think it's going to come back at at least 100 feet. Hmm. Oh, I think it's about well, not much over 300, is it, from the bay to the gulf now? It was, it was a lot further then. This is just it's so many beginning, so many feet south and southwest and so forth, corner of a lot. It doesn't give east-west footage. It just probably well, said Gulf to Bay and yes, that was it. That was it. And there was no uh, uh, Gulf Drive at that time. There was just the wagon track that went to, mm -hmm. well, about right out there. About where it is now. Yeah. 
not quite as far. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, 3334 is still a corrugated road. Oh, I road. It was a corrugated road when we came here in 48. Still. So. I don't know when it was. I think on. they paved it after the um, causeway came over there, and they were oh, anticipating so more traffic. Oh. I believe that's when they finally paved it. I wish they'd repair it a little more. I know it. It sure is bad, mm -hmm. but uh, I suppose they're spending all their money just shoring it up with that riprap on the other side to keep it from falling all into the Gulf. Well, the dog legs were no good. No. Told them that from South End, mm -hmm. uh, West End Beach, right? Well, at uh, where they put out the rock jetties, it has prevented erosion along the shore. But they were 300 feet and they were rock big boulders that uh, were put in with crane. Mother. And of the diaries are kept at the time they were building this place hmm. and uh, it was rather interesting I, I uh, well I could have cried after learning he lived here only that one winter that was not too bad oh he was so pleased with his house and said it was so much better than alls <laughs> alls they didn't they didn't do the roof right so it came down like this or <laughs> now alls was the next the one. next one it's gone and where was Smith's that's Smith. Oh, uh, Oliver Smith. Oh, I see. Captain Oliver Smith. This Oliver was Smith. I see. And then, but there was a the Brundage, Doctor Brundage from West Hampton, he built the house that the Fishers lived in. Oh yes. And that was a very early one. That was that was probably before built before these three. The, it's where the Fishers. Yeah, built. well, that was built before. These three houses yes, were built. That was before these were. Who's uh, who built that house? The old Fisher place. Uh, uh, Doctor Brundage. Doctor Brundage. From West. I think Hampton. he was a friend of Doctor Dickey. Oh, and then he. He was a friend of Doctor Dickey. He and got the other people in, in our area interested. Oh, then when did um, Fishers take it over? Uh, wasn't it Lou Fisher's first wife? Wasn't didn't he live there with his first wife before he married Alice? Well, I was trying to think. I think they were there one year, but I, I'm not sure. I think it was after she died, and he, he got her insurance <laughs> that he bought that that place and. Uh, and I, I think it was before she died. I mean, after she died, that they he bought it. Oh, you don't think the first Mrs. Fisher lived there? I don't there. think she lived there. No. I have heard Alice tell, but I don't remember. I don't remember either, except that I heard. This is funny. Just last week. Someone said to me, did you know that that old Fisher place is haunted, that there's a ghost in there? <laughs> and I said, well, what fun, who? Nice. And they said, the first Mrs. Fisher, <laughs> that she came back and haunts the place. <laughs> so now I'm interested. You think she didn't live there, so then I doubt her ghost would I come don't, back. I think that would be a foolish place to go. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> do you know the Fisher's... Uh, Live on Long Island. Yes, I knew. I know they do. Have you seen them lately? Uh, no, and I owe them a letter. But Foster, John's brother, and his wife stopped and called on them mm -hmm. uh, since we've been here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of what uh, they have done to it? I think it's marvelous. Isn't it attractive? And I'm invited to go in and see it this week, and I've forgotten about that. Mm -hmm. They had guests last week. Mm -hmm. Dottie Smith. Oh. I met her on the beach. Mm -hmm. You you really should, if you remember what it was like when the fishers were there. <laughs> it's simply incredible what they have done with it. What somebody with taste and imagination mm -hmm. and money oh, yeah. is able to do with a, what to me looked like a hopeless old Absolutely. house. Absolutely hopeless. 
And yet, if they had, so many people said, oh, why don't they just bulldoze it down and start over? But then they would have had to go up on pilings, and it would have had well, to been a completely different type of house. like those up there on the right. horrible place. Right. You know, there's a little house right across from our garage on that little street. Mm. I don't know, it belonged to some minister, Pastor Rao or something like that. And it was full of termites and the roof leaked and Mrs. Blake for years has rented it for the lowest rent of any of the places she managed. It was dreadful. And some people from Chicago bought it and have spent about twice what they paid for it completely redoing that house. And I swear they have replaced every board in it. <laughs> <laughs> a little at a time. First the side wall, then they knock out the old one, then the roof, and they tear it out. John did that with his rubble. <laughs> and you know, the I asked the builder about it. I said, wouldn't it have been just as easy to knock it down? And he said, then we could not have used this plan. We wanted oh, it to no. look like an old Captiva house. Yes, right. And we would have had to go up on pilings, and besides which the lot wasn't wide enough for by today's standards. And this way they can go right to the practically the edge of the property because that's where the original house was. And so they have built it right up to the edges, you know, and in the front. That's like Sarah Sims with their place. Well, they couldn't do that today. No. 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 Okay. Now we, uh, Foster was here. Foster and Roberta, John's brother. Uh, it used to come down in the fall before the rental. And uh, we had only winter rental for a good many years, in the later years, mm -hmm. before mother and dad mm -hmm. came down. Mm -hmm. That was, say, uh, early fours. And they would come down and uh, spend five or six weeks here. Uh, quite quite some years, ten years maybe, I think. And then they got to know the islanders and people a lot better. We just came, now we alternate winters. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, is the fourth generation, are your children just as interested in it? Oh yes, they would get the, 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 their teeth and nails and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we rent it now, summers, in order to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. They, We have two Florida children, two northern children, and the Florida children would come down here on a long weekend, a holiday weekend or something, mm -hmm. and uh, they just loved it. Hate bugs and everything, never mind. It was Captiva. Yeah. And now they haven't been able to do that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they came down ahead of our first coming two years ago in the fall to get it ready for us, and the tenants had left the house a disaster. This is what I have heard, that summer oh. tenants are just a, another breed from anyone you might rent it to in the wintertime. Oh, we didn't know him. He'd been a subtenant to the tenants, and oh. then they left, mm -hmm. and left him. Well, we only got correspondence, you know, by mail, mm -hmm. and we didn't know what was happening. It was a flop house. And That's when the white built the fence. Yes. Oh. Hmm. They were running through that. That yeah. bad. Uh, yes, it was bad, bad. Hmm. And they left a filthy place scarcely anything left to work with, burned up pots and pans. And now, do you still rent it in the summer? To the uh, second chef over at oh. Tomwood. If it's someone you know, you're all yeah. right. And he's so anxious to have it, mm -hmm. that he does everything he can, though he's not very good house cookkeeper. Well, <laughs> if the rent is right, you can afford to have well, it clean. It's very cheap rent, mm -hmm. but it's somebody here. That's true. And he is very, very conscientious and he's reliable. Do you have storm shutters that he could put up if a hurricane came? Yes, and John, you've got to show those to him. I think maybe one of them is missing. We've found uh, that, uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying this,